Hello, my name is Xavier. I am the designer behind AppCooker, and I'm going to give you a quick look about the interface of AppCooker. So here are some projects, so you can swipe from left to right. I'm going to just give you a quick overview of the home screen. So you can tap the new project button on the upper left corner. We are going to create a new project. You can rename, of course, your project here. You can choose between the iPhone 3.5, iPhone 4 inch, and this is the screen size. So you have to make sure that if you are designing for the iPhone 5, you select the i4 4 inch screen size. You can also select between portrait and landscape default orientation. This will help you to create uh, screens quickly, quicker when you are in the screen view. We're going to see that in a moment. So we're going to hit cancel. I'm going to use this Instagram project in the center of the screen. And before that, I'm going to just show you how to rename a project. You just tap the name and you can rename it. And just to note that some Bluetooth keyboard doesn't work quite well with this. So if it's not working, just disconnect your keyboard, use the digital one in the iPad and you're good to go. So to enter a project, just tap once and it's opening the project. All the projects in AppCooker are displayed in this place that we call the app board. On the app board, it's everything about your app. It's the pricing structure on the right side here. It's the information on the App Store. It's the mockup here that we're going to see in a moment. It's the icon that you are going to make and choose. And it's the ID, of course. And here are here is a notepad, a single page where you can put your ideas and brainstorms and you know the nice to have features and stuff like that. So I'm going to just enter each one of them so you can see how it's working. So the notepad is, as I said, really simple. It's just like basically uh, an infinite page where you can put like how does the privacy work and, and stuff like that. Uh, in the icon editor, you can see your icons in different size and shapes. And there is a graphic editor with all the tools you may need like vector shapes over here and also whoops sorry and also here the bitmap drawing tool here the text tools um, I'm going to undo that and you can also import your images and basically what it's going to do is going to crop the corners with the new iOS 7 kind of uh, round and square at the same time so you can really get a feel of what your icon will look like on the App Store, on the device, and basically like the big artwork. The idea is very central. There will be another video talking about that. So I'm going to take it like very quickly. There is this evaluation here, uh, so you can compare your idea to the competition. There is the type of app you are going to make, and this is going to give you here on the right side some key advices from Apple and professional developers. And here is the definition statement. And we are going to treat that in an other video, as I said. Now, before we go to the mock-up, let's have a look at the scenario. So this is to help you to create and find your business model. At what price are you going to be profitable? At what price your customers are going to buy the application? What is going to be the price structure? Is it going to be a free application with advertisement, a free application with in-app purchases, a freemium model, a paid model, and stuff like that. And this will be covered in an other video. And before the mock-up, we're going to have a look at the store information. So basically, those information here are the information that are non-localizable. And every application share those uh, information. You have to choose that. So the idea behind this is if, for example, here on this line, I select frequent meal prolonged traffic or sadistic realistic violence, this is going to tell me that this content will not be sold via iTunes. So make sure that this is 
uh, in line with Apple policy on it. It's really strict on it. And this is basically the information that is localizable. So the app name here, uh, the store name just beneath, then you have to fill the keywords in the description and all of this, I advise you to make them before you start uh, creating your design because the keywords will influence your design. The description will influence the design. Even the name can influence the design. So make sure that, again, you start with this and then when you're good to go, you just go into the mock-up section, which is really the heart of App Cooker. So this is a place that we call the screen view. As you can see, I can zoom in, zoom out. I can have quite a lot of detail here. You can also see that the screens are connected and I can freely move them around so I can really create the flow of my application. And this map, this screen map, is going to be exported in the App Taster uh, project that you can share with your clients, coworkers, and friends. And this is going to be free. So now I'm going to just uh, give you a quick look at how you can add a screen. As I said earlier, this is a project with the portrait as a default screen. So every time I tap on an empty space, it will display, it will add a portrait uh, screen. You can also add a screen from here, but we're not going to do that. We're going to enter the, the screen. And this is it. You are in the interface to create mockups. So at the bottom of the screen here is the place that we call the property bar. And the property bar you change, guess what? The properties of the screen. So I can change the background color. I can tell the screen that it's going to be both portrait and landscape. And this is magic because App Cooker is the only mock-up tool on the market right now that gives you the opportunity to design both portrait and landscape screen at the same time. What it's going to do is when you hit the play button and you hold the device in portrait, it will display the portrait uh, screen. And when you're in landscape, it will be the landscape. So that's really handy when you want to just see how your interface will look like in portrait or landscape or both. And for this, we're gonna stick with portrait. Then you can add over here all the shapes and tools you want. So this is a vector shape. And as you can see, there is those uh, orange lines. So this is the smart guide. If you want to disable it, it's here at the bottom in the center and make sure that when nothing is selected and, and here you have the general option. When something is selected, as you can see, the bottom bar changes the state. So this is the properties of the object you, 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 are, you have selected and all the information, everything that you can change about the properties of this object is located here. If you want to have a particular shape, a size of shape, you can change it here in the size. And the top bar I just show is called the transformation bar. And I can, for example, change this square to an 80 per 80. And I can also put it at a very precise, um, very precise uh, place if I want. I can move it pixel per pixel. So we wanted to give Akuka a very interesting and very powerful level of precision. Now I'm going to snap to guide and as you can see, you can also do it in proportion. If I, for example, take a rectangle, I can resize it in proportion. I can also snap it back to a square model. So that's really handy. Our users are loving it. So, vector shapes. Here I can draw something like this, and then I can scale it down. So this is really handy for if you don't find the icons or you want to quickly sketch something, it's, it's really super handy. You have the text options, and this is a little bit not good as it should be. So now we're gonna do that. I can change the font and as you can see there's a ton of fonts 
and type font. So you really have the choice here. You can change the size, you can align it, you can do a lot of that of stuff. You can also import your images. It's going to be treated in an other video. I just want to give you a quick look at what you can see and do in our program. And this is the widget part. So I can, let's move around here. I'm going to delete that, bring back the background in white. And I'm going to add the status bar, navigation bar. Now I'm going to add a top bar. And as you can see, as I put them on the canvas, they are placed at the right place. And then you can edit them very easily with the options located in the property bar. And last but not least, this is the link tool. So it's really easy to connect two screens together. Just add, oh, just add a link. And if I have an object selected, for example, a text like this, and I tap the link, it will be added on top of the link. But this will be treated after that. So to add a link and connect two screens together, all I have to do is select the, the, the link area. Then I can choose the trigger, I can choose the target, and I can even choose the type of transition. And I can see what it's going to be, what, what it's going to look like. I can change the duration. I can really be very close to what a real app will do. Now that I've done that, I'm going to delete that screen. And oh, it doesn't work. Deal it now. Okay. And if I hit the play button right now, guess what? It's going to play. And I'm going to rotate the device. Okay. And now, if I double tap, I can with this button here, I can show or hide the um, the links. So that's perfect if you're doing some user testing. Now I can get a feel of what the flow is going to be when I make something like that. So that's really simple, really easy to use. And um, that's pretty much it. Um, just to finish, this is how you export something. You can export it as an Apoker file. This is for backupping all your work. It's going to take all the icons, all the screens, all the descriptions. Everything that is on the app board is going to fit inside the app cooker file. Then you have the app taster file. The app taster file is something that you use for sharing with friends, colleagues, coworkers, clients, and you are going to be able to choose a particular icon, a particular um, description and price scenario and take your mockup and send it and get feedback very easily. You can also send it with a PDF. It's a lightweight PDF. And in the PDF, you find everything. There is the idea, the notepad, all the icons, all the screens, everything is on this PDF. And that's it. I'm going to see you in another video. Thank you.